We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers who we can give the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. We have come to Bomet County where the land is green all year round, but farmers are still having problems. One, two, three, four, wow, Tony. five. <laughs> Why are they so small? Yeah, you know, Peter didn't get a very good harvest. Oh, gosh. Peter. Yes? Would you like potatoes like this. Hey, of course, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, those, they look good. They are Peter, good. let's go meet an expert and make sure your potatoes look like this ones. All right, let's go, let's go. Thank you. We are with Peter and Ruth, a young farming family who have six children. The three oldest children are at school, and the youngest is just one year old. Their farm is about five acres and they grow a variety of vegetables and have some cows that need some care and attention. They also have half an acre of potatoes that could be doing much, much better. An expert from Lachlan has come to look at the potatoes and tell Peter how to get better yields. Peter has been getting this size of potato. P Peter, is, is that true? It is very true. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me very discouraged. Discouraged? Very discouraged. Mary, why do you think this is happening? That is happening because farmers, like Peter, has not put in place all the practices that a farmer should do in the farm yes. to improve his production. Majorly, the farmer should embrace the VS Power Program. What exactly is Viazi Power Program? It is a program from Lachlan. It improves production, potato production in a farm. The Viazi Power Program uses a mixture of chemicals at different stages of the crop to increase the number, size, and quality of potatoes. In one acre, how much would a farmer get? You can get 50 to 8 sacks in one acre. And also the size is bigger and the quality is good. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, Peter, have you ever heard of Viazi Power? I've tried, but I failed. Peter had tried the Viazi Power program, but did not manage it properly. Instead of buying good seed and the Viazi Power treatments, he had to pay school fees. This is a problem all farmers face, and everyone must budget for their expenses to be able to pay for school fees and to invest in the shamba. What do you think exactly happened? Peter failed because one, he didn't use certified seeds. He got seeds from the friends, is it? Yeah. Then he came and used it with our Viazi Power products. The second thing, Peter did not rotate the crops. Mm -hmm. You must rotate your crops to keep the soils healthy and also to stop pests and diseases growing in your farm. If you grow the same family of crop, like potatoes and tomatoes in the same place every season, the pests and disease which attack them will grow very fast and destroy your crop. Mary, how can I do crop rotation? In crop rotation, first you do not plant the same crop of the same family of potatoes. Like with your case here, you can rotate with maize, beans, go back to sorghum, then you, go, you come back to viazi. That is potatoes. What are the common mistakes that farmers make when adapting this method? First, they should do a soil test to be sure of the amount of fertilizers they should use in their farm before commencing on any other thing they do in the field. For you to get the good yield and good quality from our program, you have to use certified seed. So Mary, in planting Viazi power, do you plant them just like any other potatoes? No, there's a big difference on how we do. Ah. Yeah. So big, big difference. Very big difference. So do you think we should do it practically? Yeah. All right. Go and see. There are several steps to take in the Viazi Power Program. The first is at planting, when you need to soak the seeds in a mixture of chemicals. The chemicals come in a box with enough for half an acre field. Always remember to wear protective gear when handling chemicals. Have ready 20 liters of clean water in a bucket. Mix in the chemicals from the planting pack for soaking. 
Tricotech, MyTech, Vitazine, MaxiBoost, and Black Magic. Then, Starwell. These chemicals will help to stop fungal diseases, kill nematodes, stop potato scorching, make more shoots sprout, and give the seeds the food they need to grow well. Put the seeds in a sack and soak in the mixture for six minutes. Then drain the sack. Now we need to plant the treated seeds correctly. On your prepared potato field, dig furrows 25 centimeters deep and 75 centimeters apart. Mix either NPK or DAP fertilizer with black magic well, I just uh, washed mm -hmm. them before I cut. Okay. Yeah. It's good that you start with washing. That's yeah. okay. Because uh, s some people do the washing after cutting, which is not good for the nutrients because they wash away. After washing, you should cut uh, big pieces. Okay. If you cut small pieces, you leave a lot of nutrients to disappear. And it's not good. So if you cut big pieces, yeah. it's good for you because you keep your nutrients. Does it matter how you wash them? Uh, yes, it mm -hmm. matters. Uh, you have running water and then you make sure that they are cleaned on both sides well. Mm -hmm. So after that, what do you do? After that, now you can cut uh, your sukumas into big pieces. Does it matter how you cook it? Yes, it's very important. Ruth, is it possible to explain to us uh, how do you do your cooking? I wash first and then I cut into small positions mm -hmm. and then I just fry for a short while. How long? For just 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. another uh, problem uh, or mistake that people make mm -hmm. so that you have very nice vegetables like you have here. Mm -hmm. uh, they are well mixed, but then when you come to cook, you cook it for too long. Because mostly vegetables, uh, five to eight minutes should be maximum. It's good when you eat, you feel a bit of the crunch. Sometimes if they are cooked too much, they even turn to another dark green color, then you've lost it. So it's good to cook it for very few minutes, and when you eat, you feel the crunch of the vegetables. So what is the nutrition value for the whole family? If we talk about the health of the family, children that are not having good nutrition, and good nutrition means uh, having enough food yeah, and a variety. So children are not suffering from malnutrition mm -hmm. uh, like kwashiako and marasmus. Mm -hmm. When you come to the study, good nutrition helps your children to stay focused, concentrate in class, and even have good memory yeah, to remember things they've learned. So remember, always wash your vegetables before cutting. Then cut them into big pieces and only cook them for five minutes. All this will help keep all the goodness in the vegetables so her family stays strong and they can concentrate better at school. Tony, what are you doing with your phone, eh? Aren't you supposed to be working? Now, me, do you know that mobile phones have made a huge difference to farmers? Right? You know, using the iShamba service, I can get Peter information on weather, what crops to plant, and reliable markets for his crops. This is amazing. iShamba has all the information Ruth and Peter need for their farm. And any information I might need to ship up their cows. And they can tell us if to rain this week, so we know to carry umbrellas. Or to plant our potatoes. All we need to do now is subscribe to iShamba by sending the word JOY. 21606 and someone will call us to tell us more Wow, Tony, I see you've gotten information of growing big potatoes. Oh, yes, but there's still lots of work to be done in this shamba, and first I'll do a soil test. Yes, and there's an expert coming in to check on the cows. And we'll see you right after the break. To receive all shamba shape up leaflets, SMS the word all with your name and address to 30606. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Bomet with Peter and Ruth. 
and we have shaped up their potatoes and the vegetables they eat. And still we have to look at the cows. But first, I need to find out how healthy the soil is. To help us, soil cares have come to visit in their mobile soil testing truck. Their truck travels all over the country. So farmers don't have to go far to have their soil tested. First, we need to know why soil testing is so important. Job, why is it important for farmers to do a soil test? Doing a soil test will enable the farmer to know how much fertilizer, for example, he is supposed to use, the type of fertilizer, the specific blend that he's supposed to use, and also doing a soil test will help this farmer to increase his crop yields. So it's very important for the farmer to do a soil test. Peter, have you ever done a soil test? Uh, no, I have never turned uh -huh. before. And how do your crops perform on the farm, uh, for example? They are performing poorly. When you say poorly, what do you mean? Do you have low yield? Do you have high yeah, yield? Low yield. That's the reason why to, you need to do a soil test? Yes. What crops are you planting? I normally grow maize, beans, potatoes, and so many other groups. One important thing that we're going to do for him is we're going to do a soil test for him so that he can know the type of fertilizer he's supposed to use, the amount of fertilizer he's supposed to use, and any other soil amendment that will be required for his farm for the specific crop that he wants to grow. You want to grow potatoes? Yes. For the potatoes, he will need to know how much fertilizer to use, which type of fertilizer, and if he needs anything else to put into that soil to get the correct yield that he wants to harvest. What is the common mistake that farmers do with their soils? First of all, they don't test their soils. They always buy fertilizer and they apply blanket fertilizers from the market without caring to know if that is the right fertilizer for the crops they are growing. It's a big mistake for the farmers. Job, how is soil care different from other testing units? It has mobile soil testing laboratories, which means we can drive to the farmer's farm and do a soil test on the farm and be able to provide the farmer with the soil testing results within two hours. We can also do this for the farmer at a very affordable price. Right now we have seven mobile units in the country that are doing soil testing for different farmers in different regions. So we can do this for the farmer and at the farmer's doorstep. Would you like to have your soil tested? Of course, I'd like to. Well, let's go pick a sample. Use up soil auger and dig out soil from 20 places in the farm. Push it into the soil and turn it a few times. Pull it out and pour the soil into a bag. Follow a zigzag or W pattern over the whole area that you farm in order to get a good sample. Take everything that is not soil, such as grass, roots, worms or rocks, out of the soil sample. Job, Peter has done a very good job of collecting the samples. So what do we do from here? The last thing that we are supposed to do on this farm is for Peter now to take his farm details. He should indicate to us his phone number, his full names, the total acreage that the sample has been taken from, and uh, the crop that he intends to grow in the next season. Then we can take the soil to the mobile soil testing unit. Oh, great. Let's get there. All right, thank you. The sample then goes to the lab, and Peter gets a reference number. While we wait for the results, we get some top tips from other farmers on the Soil Cares TV. Soil, so it isn't eroded on the left-hand side. The lab takes two hours to analyze each sample. They test for phosphorus, nitrogen, potassium, micronutrients, organic matter, and acidity. When the results are ready, the lab prints the report. It's time to find out how healthy Peter's soil is. Job, I can see you have the results of the soil tests. How do they look? So far, on average, his farm looks good. His soil pH is 5.1. So if he's growing potatoes, this is an okay pH for growing potatoes. So he does not need to do liming at this point in time. On the soil fertility part, we tested for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Our results indicate that his field has low nitrogen, but he has enough phosphorus, and he also has low potassium. Mm -hmm. That means that the type of fertilizer he needs to use must have enough nitrogen and enough potassium. Okay, but our fuller, which fertilizer should I use? From the test results that we have, we are recommending that you use 
mare fertilizer 17 17 17 that means it has 17 parts of nitrogen 17 parts of phosphorus and 17 parts of potassium and following instructions can the farmer recoup the cost that he has spent on the soil test just to make uh, to put that into perspective peter yes how much money did you harvest from your farm the previous season 27000 kenya shillings if peter follows the advice of the report he will for sure increase his harvest this means even after paying for the soil test and the cost of fertilizer he will need to use he will still make a healthy profit and can take home more than the 27000 he made Following the regular soil care's advice will help you to take good care of your soil and ensure long-term soil fertility and high yields. This means increased income. What else can I grow in my shamba? From the test results that we have, you can comfortably at the moment grow potatoes. But if you are to change the crop to, let's say, maize or beans, we are recommending that you do a bit of liming to raise your soil pH so that it's suitable for growing those crops. We are also recommending that you also add two tons or 2,000 kilograms of compost manure to your farm to make it better so that it can hold more moisture or more water and you can also add more nutrients from the organic manure for your crops to perform very well. The soil report will even tell them how to improve their fodder plot for their cows. If the cows have enough food, they can produce more milk. But feeding the cows well isn't all. You need to get a lot of milk. We need to know how to get rid of all the ticks these cows have. Ruth and Peter here have a nice cow shed, as you can see, but they're not happy. Uh, I've inspected your cow shed and uh, I can say you've done some work. But uh, there's some question I would like to ask maybe that will help me to understand more of the challenges you are going through currently. First, I would like to understand how much milk will you usually get per day from the three cows we've seen. 18 liters of milk per day. 18 liters per day from the three cows. Yeah. So that comes to uh, an average of like six, six, six liters per cow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also like to know how frequently do you do your spraying on your animals? We normally spray uh, twice per month. That means after two weeks, oh, we twice spray. Per month. Okay, when you talk of um, profitability of the farm, there are some things we look at. Uh, we have to look at like four aspects. That is one, tick control, worm control, nutrition, and the general management of your animals. If you talk of six liters per cow per day, under natural circumstances, a cow is supposed to produce not less than five liters under natural pasture without any supplementation. That means you are actually underproducing. You are not actually producing as the, uh, to the expected levels. And I've already inspected your animals. I found that they have some uh, ticks. Ticks are actually one of the problems you are looking at farms. If you look at tick infestation currently, it's so high. And uh, most of the farmers are actually having a lot of challenges dealing with ticks. And uh, we look at how we are going to help and control those ticks. Because um, if you talk of two weeks, there's a problem also. We are supposed to do it on a weekly basis. After seven days, you, you, you need to repeat again and spray properly. Uh, also, I've looked at your water trough. Your water trough is not actually in a very good condition. Yes, you've tried and uh, you have a good uh, structure. You need to actually clean it at least every three days. You empty the trough and put in clean water so that you reduce chances of your animals getting infection from the water. Mm -hmm. And also the floor should be clean because we are looking at a healthy, productive animal. So the floor can be also another way whereby your animal uh, might be getting some kind of infections. So we need to clean it on a daily basis. We are talking about infections. Do you think they have worms? There are some signs of uh, worm infestation. Your cows are having like a rough hair coat. And that is one of the signs of um, having worms. Also another thing is production, because we are talking of six liters. When a cow has some worms, that will lead also to low production, and also it will affect on the general health of your animals. If your animals will be sick most of the time because of that compromised immunity from ticks and at the same time from, from worms. Mm -hmm. So we need actually to solve those, and uh, you will be back to like produce more milk per day. You must always wear gloves when deworming. First, use a weigh band to measure the cow's weight, which will tell us how much dewormer to use. 30 milliliters of Neflux is used for a cow weighing 300 kilograms. 50. When the dewormer has been measured with a drenching gun, put the tube into the cow's mouth and release the dewormer. Hold the cow's mouth shut until it has swallowed everything. 
you must deworm every three months for adult cows. Now it's time to spray the cows. Always wear protective clothing to do this. Use 20 milliliters of grenade in 20 liters of water in a knapsack and mix well. Start at the tail of the cow, moving towards the head, spraying the legs, tail, udder, body, neck and face. Make sure you get the underside of the cow too. You need to spray the cows every seven days. Many ticks are transferred to cows from dogs in the chamber. Grenade can also be used on small animals. So, if you spray your cows, you can also spray your dogs and your goats if you have some. If Ruth and Peter can keep the three cows from worms and ticks and feed them well, each cow should give them at least 15 liters of milk per day. This will give them an extra 30 liters of milk to sell every day, which will pay for the children to go to school. We have looked at the potatoes, the cows and the soil. The soil test is very useful, but farmers also need to stop soil being lost from their farm with rain or wind. Soil erosion will take the good soil from your farm and you will not be able to grow good crops. As you know, we have in Kenya this soil erosion, taking all our good soils from our farms because we don't manage them quite well. They go and pollute the rivers. So people are depending on that for water use. They are getting poor quality water. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are saying we have to focus so much on our soil because we depend on it for our livelihoods. What are the solutions? One of the issues is that we have to go in for soil erosion control, especially when we are looking at the landscape management. We start on farm. You will find the upper part of the farm is more fertile because farmers can easily use organics and mineral fertilizer because of the distance from the household. All farmers have to know the knowledge on how to manage their soils and that will be a collective responsibility for the community so that some of the soils that are running to pollute the rivers are not doing that. And then we can be able to retain that soil in the place where it is supposed to be. To stop soil being taken by water or wind, you need to make terraces or contours to hold the soil where it is. When soil is washed away, it pollutes rivers, lakes and dams so that people cannot use the water there anymore. So you're saying one farmer can affect the community at large? I can give you an example. Mm -hmm. If a farmer had upstream striker weed seed, if it is carried through the surface runoff, it is going to <coughs> impact on the, the neighbor so that he has again another infestation of striker on the farm, which he eventually reduces on crop yield. And looking at uh, our farmer's uh, shamba, do you think he has managed his resources well? He's trying his level best, but I think he is not yet up to the management that is required. We could focus on the decline in soil fertility problems. Within even the farm, we have all this uh, soil variability. Fields that are very close to the household, they usually tend to have more inputs than the fields that are very distant. One example, the soils that are very far and which have problems like this one, you'll find there is less organic matter content in it. It's a bit sandy mm. and also loose in that there is no stickiness. Eh? Mm. But the ones which are with organic material, it, it's sticky, which means they hold more water, which can be used for the plants to pick up the nutrients from the soils very faster, and that one will result into higher heat. And like this one, because of the texture, less organic matter and less mineral nutrients, you find the productivity is always low. But he can do better? Definitely. And he has now to focus on the lower fields. And the, this one he has now to bring more of the organics down. He has also to bring more of the mineral fertilizer down. And he has to do a bit of residue retention more downwards here, like the mist over. All the crops that he, after harvest, you should be able to leave it and plow it in so that we have more organic matter into the soil. Now, Peter and John, I can see you're both holding maize stalks. Where did you get this one from? This one, I got it from this lower part. It's still in your chamber? It's in my chamber. <laughs> and that one? 
It's also my chamber, but the upper side of the land. This is explained. The field, which is very close to the farm, has all those components. And even in terms of water retention, it is high, so that nutrients can be picked up by the crop, and then you have better yields. There you will get less than a ton per hectare. Here you will get about six to seven tons. Wow. Peter's maize is healthy and tall near his house because he has been putting all the manure on the soil near his cow shed. He needs to put more manure on the lower fields where the soils are poorer to get his crops to grow evenly so he can get a good harvest from all his fields. What can I do? Can I carry this manure up from there to this place? You have to do your farm plan well. You don't have to waste more resources there. You now spread the ones with the less resources. I know there will be labor involved, but the yields that will be able to come out will be able to cover that. So you need to transport that farmyard manure and also mineral fertilizer. We have learned a lot on this farm, from the vegetables, potatoes, and the maize, to the soils and the cows. Peter and Ruth are going to work hard, and we're sure when we come back, we'll find a healthier and more profitable family farm. If you'd like to receive just a leaflet for this farm, SMS Farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. Shamba Shep Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shep Up to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter, at Shamba Shepa, or simply text 30606.